Ah, g'day everyone. Just uh, messing about with this broadsword. So, actually, what I want to talk about today are paintbrushes. Probably not this size, although this can be useful for terrain. Very useful. The old classic primary school paintbrush or elementary school if you're in the US. Very useful for big pieces of terrain. But uh, I'm going to have a bit of a ramble about paintbrushes. I personally like watching videos about paintbrushes. Um, not the ones you paint your house with, but the ones that we miniature painters use. Um, always interested to see what kind of brushes other people are using and to see reviews of new types of paint brushes. Um, so I thought I'd give you some thoughts uh, about how I use brushes, what brushes I use, what my experience has been. Um, you can take it or you can leave it. Uh, I'm not saying the way I do it is the way you have to, um, not by any means. Um, is hopefully that you know that'll come out as we have a natter about it now i can't actually you might be able to see um, to how bright the light is over there um and i apologize on my last video <laughs> i was only <laughs> when i really looked at it afterwards i was trying to hold up a picture of a watercolor i'd done and it was just white light and I, <laughs> there is one of the really real blessings of working in this part of the house um, where there are no curtains, it's a double glazed part of the house um, and there's just tons of natural light. It's a fantastic place for painting. Got windows either side like like on a corner sort of thing. The light's just streaming in but it has been making it very difficult for um, filming videos what happens is the camera just reads the desk looks at the desk and just turns it into white basically because the light is so bright so um, if I'm going to do like here's me working at the desk type of videos I'm going to have to wait till it's a very very overcast rainy day or I'm going to have to do some videos of an evening uh, so we'll see how that goes because I would like to do some let's look at what's on the desk stuff so, excuse me, I'm just going to grab some paint brushes and we'll have a chat. Excuse me while I turn my back slightly. I've made some notes to help prompt me. Okay, brushes. Now, there's just a few of my brushes. Uh, and then I've got another jar and then another one of those round things with lots of holes in them. And then there's a saucer on my desk that has is spread with even more brushes. Um, I've got a lot of brushes. And I'd say um, there's a big percentage of them that hardly get used. Uh, either because they're kind of worn out, but I haven't got rid of them yet. Because you never know when they might be useful. Um, or they're very much for very specific jobs. Uh, Probably terrain or something like that. Um, like I'm talking like the big broad brushes, or if I, you know, if I was painting um, or like a large surface, like a vehicle or something. But what I want to talk about is, um, you know, you get a lot of videos and things where people people ask, "What's the best brush?" You know, and even in recent times, and I like watching those videos. Don't get me wrong, you know, guys was, you know, tell you what they're number one brushes and what their favorite brushes and you know you should buy this brush um but also i think there's a lot of guys out there who a bit like me is like what how we see it is and how i see it is the best brush it's a bit like looking in your tool shed looking at a job you've got to do around the home or something and looking in your tool shed or your toolbox and finding the right tool for the job it's a cliched thing but it's the same with miniature painting. Personally, I don't use the same brush or the same type of brush 
all the time for painting miniatures. I use lots of different brushes to do different things. Um, and not just the obvious things like a big scruffy old brush for, for undercoating. Because I'm not I don't do spray undercoating. Um, always it's always done by brush for me anyway personally. Um, um, or the other obvious things is we, we, we have special brushes for terrain, that kind of thing. But um, I kind of tend to break it down a bit further in that, and you know, I'll, I'll show you various examples. Um, now, so in this, this jar here, this has is basically all cheap synthetics. Oh, it's not fruit chutney, it was once. Um, <laughs> Cheap, cheap synthetics um, and most of them are fairly large by miniature painters sort of standards I guess um, and some are whoppers and probably haven't been used too much um, like this is and this is something another point I'll make not all brushes are created equal in terms of size either one manufacturer is size 8 and this is uh, J Burroughs round synthetic size 8 but also this is also a size 8 and this is from um, oh it's from the US uh, but made in China cheap synthetics uh, probably from the Hobby Lobby or something like that a mate sent me over a pack I'll come to that a bit later so they're both called size 8 but they're different sizes and you'll find that whether it's um, synthetic brushes or sable brushes, Kalinsky sable, that sort of stuff. One, one company's size one is more like another company's size zero or vice versa. You know, a, one company's size two might look like a, or a zero or a one. So it's kind of like worth trying lots of different types of brushes if you can to find a size and style that you like to work with. Okay, so the best brush is the one that's the right tool for the particular job you're doing. So I'll show you, excuse me, turning my back slightly. I have to do that. At the moment, believe it or not, this is my undercoating brush at the moment. I've, I've tried different brushes over a period of time but at the moment, this is my undercutting brush. Um, and this is like a, a flat, well, it's got a bit fluffy now, but it's basically what they call a flat. But it's kind of a fluffed up flat. Um, and this is an inexpensive brush, probably from a set of brushes. Um, Montmart, uh, they're sort of a cheap crafty brand here in Australia. Um, and it's a size 15. Now, you might think, how could you undercoat with something like that? Well. It's actually pretty easy. I mean, it's got a lot of um, it's soft, but it's got pretty good snap and a certain amount of give. It's not like a squirrel hairbrush that's all floppy or anything. It allows me to, on a miniature, to be able to get undercoat on the brush and better, not just apply strokes like that but actually poke the paint in because there's enough give in and surface here to get into those nooks and crannies so that's what I use for my uh, undercoat uh, okay. and so that's an example of tool, a tool for the job now in here and I've got a couple of flats in here okay here this particular paintbrush, this is a flat again. It's got this flat chisel like into it. It's only a small synthetic, the size two apparently. And this, I use this to paint, specifically to paint the edges of a base. Because it's just about wide enough. And it makes the job really easy and it's flat and you can get a nice straight line around the base with like a dark, I, I generally use like um, uh, 
German camo dark brown or just a really dark brown. Um, and so that works for that. Now, for um, when I put it on my, so I've primed a miniature, I've got it on its base, I've put grit down, um, sand and PVA, I've got it prepped. When this comes to starting to block the colours in. So what I go for, what I tend to grab, I'll just grab here on my desk, is again one of these. Um, now this is a size 8, and you might think, my goodness, he's, he's blocking in with a size 8? Yes. Um, <laughs> It actually has a lot of advantages. These are inexpensive, or the equivalent, the similar, you know, uh, you could find similar things in a hobby shop or online in, on eBay or something like that. It's just cheap synthetic or tacklon or nylon, whatever. Got plenty of spring, and it, and it comes to a decent point. I mean, it won't keep that point forever. And I think we all know that if we keep using a synthetic brush, it'll either hook or it'll fray and then you move on to serving a different purpose you might then that might become your brush for applying washes or it might become a, a brush for dry brushing or who knows what it's during a paint pot but you know and mine tend to work like that through various stages of um, from being fresh like this um, to you know getting a bit dilapidated and used for something else. Now these are these are inexpensive, and um, part of the and I've just grabbed my friend. Um, it was a bit of a silly story, but but quite fun. Um, was that uh, my friend Daniel? G'day Daniel, if you're watching. Um, bought me because I'm a, I. I I enjoy um, James Wapple's work. I don't know, I may have mentioned that before. But um, my friend in the US, Daniel, bought me a packet of these. This is the sort of brush that Wop James Wapple picks up from the craft store and goes through tons of them. So he bought me a pack. And <laughs> as <laughs> he actually took them with him to Gen Con, and, and it's kind of rubbed off, but on the back it did used to say, James Wapple signed the back of the packet. Cheers, John, have fun. Sign James Wobbles. <laughs> a bit nerdy, a bit fanboyish, but there you go. And so, yeah, I've got four left in there, but I bought other sort of cheap sort of Chinese brushes as well. And I go through, I threw a lot of them, but it is surprising how long they will last. And I paint a lot. Like I'm painting for hours every day. I do it basically as my job. So, you know, for multiple hours. It's surprising how long these will work. And if they are a bit weird on the end, sometimes you'll get them and they're a bit split or weird, you can just get a really ultra sharp craft knife and just trim that tip just slightly, make it a bit neater or a really sharp pair of fine scissors and just neaten it up. Because basically all you want for your blocking in is you want, you want it to come to a good point. And really importantly for me as well, um, for the blocking in stage and for a lot of the other work that I do later, is you want it to have some belly. And these are sort of brushy terms. We talk about, um, you know, the importance of a good point, a good belly on the brush. That 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 means that it will hold water or hold more paint. You, you don't want it to, and you've probably a lot of you have probably heard this before because a lot of people have talked about it. You don't want paint going zip all the way up to what we call the ferrule, this metal part, because that'll be just clag your brush up, block it up. Um, you just want it this sort of halfway up, but it allows a lot of water to be held in there so that when you're blocking in, you can get a lot done um, before you have to dip back in again or whatever, whether you're dipping in or using a wet palette or whatever, before you have to reload basically. So this is what I, I do my blocking in with this. Um, what I tend to use is I'll grab, I won't use the same brush that I'm using for my main colours when I do metallic. I'll get like a, just an alter, just another similar sort of brush, probably a bit finer, and I make sure that um, we don't get like the um, sort of mixing 
mixing the water up so that I'm using I tend to change the water after I've used metallic paint um, because otherwise it when you if you go back to using standard paint after it tends to pick up the particles that are in the metallic and carry it onto your miniature where you don't necessarily want it so uh, I encourage you to after you use metallic paint rinse your water jar out or cup or whatever and refill it or have just two different um, sort of cups on the go at once for different purposes because um, that metallic stuff tends to get in there and it can be hard to get rid of the little tiny little flakes um, so actually yeah so the way I work I block in with this and then I'll use like a slight a similar brush again um, to apply washes so, um, and I use like different I'll use uh, sometimes two or three they used to about three different washes depending on what the, the figure is and different um, parts of the figure get different washes like I have a different wash for metal and different wash for wood um, and then another one for lots of other parts of the figure so yeah so now the only time I use the really super duper brushes talking like your um, Kalinsky sable and all that is when it comes to the really fine details where I want that precision and that you know that I know I'm going to better get and keep a good point and that's when excuse me again for cleaning just going to grab okay that's when I'll use um, my Windsor & Newton Series 7 now I've I've tried a lot of different brushes over the years um, and I'm not saying this is the best out there but it's been they've been good for me um, I have had some unfortunate experiences with other really good brushes that I happened I think I happened to hit a bit of a hump in the manufacturing process when they were uh, they may have had a change of staff or something in the factory um, I'm thinking of the Raphael 8404s there was a, a patch where there was some uh, less than brilliant brushes being produced from the factory but I think I'm fairly certain they're back on track now but this was a few years ago and I, I think I just got a bad series of uh, Raphael brushes that really from the very outset wouldn't hold a proper point they just didn't have enough snap you know that ability to sort of spring back into shape when you use them and um, yeah this wouldn't hold a point um, even with training you know putting in brush soap and stuff like that so um, yeah I, I've so I've gone back to Windsor & Newton series 7 this is a size 1 um, I find that I can do pretty much any small stuff I want to do with a size 1 um, because they hold their point so well so what I do after a session of using um, this is it'll get a a quick it gets washed in water excuse me in my water and then in the water jar and then I might give it a bit of a rinse in um, Vallejo brush restorer just to be kind to it and then I'll give it um, before it gets puts its tube back on it and I'll, I'll use some of the master's uh, brush cleaner um, that so many of us probably already have I've only got a, a wee little jar but they last for ages um, other products probably are available or other things would do a similar job I guess but um, yeah I found that and then and then the, I leave I clean it out with this and then I leave some of the soap in it and bring it back to that tight point so that it can dry and it's just like sort of training it to keep its shape because otherwise stray hairs because these are natural fiber things you know hairs can sometimes get dry out snap off ping out um, and it's just sort of training it so when it comes to use it again to so come to do a face or some eyes and stuff I'll rinse the soap out get it back to a point and then get back to work again but for um, the majority of the miniature that I paint, 
it's really those that green type brush that I'm using, believe it or not. Um, it might seem big, but when when the point's reliable and the belly's good on it, but I don't I don't expect everyone to use do this use this way of painting like do things my like I said from the beginning it it all depends uh, there are a lot of factors uh, brush control is a big one I've had a lot of practice but if if you're not getting to paint very often um, you're not going to be as practiced as uh, with your brush control perhaps I mean some people even have like um, they might have health problems that get, cause them to shake sl slightly or it might hurt to hold the brush for a long period of time so it's hard to develop that kind of brush control you know um, as someone who plays has played the drums uh, for a long time I know that um, the unlike with any instrument in a lot of schools the more you practice the better you can get and the easier certain things become through repetition and through uh, through those habits I mean I know that my drumming's nowhere near as good as a lot of other people uh, particularly because I th don't I, I don't do a lot of I don't have a really good left hand like as far as my drumming because I don't do a lot of exercises to make my left as good as my right and it's kind of the same with brush control and painting it it's the more you do the more it's going to help you develop those skills those fine motor skills and obviously other factors have to come into play like um, having good lighting, having magnification if you need it, and a good sort of base from which to work from, you know, um, having something decent to hold your miniature on. Um, so that, yeah, you've got that solid base, you know, you're firm, you're not gonna wobble all over the place. So a lot of it's practice, and I, I don't know, I, I'm not saying everybody should brush out and use these, uh, this type of thing um there another painter who's does some super work um uses this sort of brush all the time is uh sam lens um you've probably seen him on tabletop minions he 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 also like has like the kalinsky sable type brushes for doing that ultra detail sort of stuff and the really fine freehand work but most of the time he's using brushes like this um like waffle is and stuff and i think once you get used to how they work, um, yeah, well, it works for me. And I'm not saying everyone should do it. Some people are more than happy to just paint the whole miniature with their Klinsky Sable size one. And if that's how you're happy to paint it, that's fine. Um, but sometimes it's good to have a go with different brushes and surprise yourself with what they can do. I mean, yeah, I some brushes are very expensive and that can depend where you buy them from um i'm just looking at so if i've just written down what on my list of notes here one of the questions is do i need a small brush mm, it depends <laughs> like i've said it depends on brush control depends on what you're trying to do um you may not need as, as small a brush as you think you need. Often it's about the point and having good snap that it will snap back into shape. And it depends the sort of things you're painting to. But sometimes those really small brushes will actually slow you down a lot. But anyway, um, I've also got here on my notes. Does price indicate which one is best? Not necessarily. Um, as I've kind of already sort of hinted at often these cheap ones you can do a perfectly good job with them but I do I do think it's good to have like a couple of special brushes set aside that that you feel happy with using for that really fine detail work uh, whether it's freehand or skin faces whatever where you want to get precise fine lines um, you want it to know it's going to hold its point it's not going to go weird on you um, and lose its shape when you're trying to work with it so um i'm also going to show you something new i've got i haven't had a chance to try yet but my pal on facebook graham green award-winning 
painter and uh, is often in the in the um, pages of uh, miniature war games with his uh, Middle Earth stuff that he converts and paints. He's a top painter, very friendly bloke. We often chat on Facebook, exchange ideas and things. He recommended to me to have a go at getting hold of some of these. Now these are made in Russia. It's a company called, it probably won't, it won't show up on there, but it's called Rublov. Rublov. Spelt, spelt R-O-U-B-L-O-F-F. Now Graham bought some of these from eBay from a Russian seller, and these and there are they do a lot of different sets. If you look up Rublov online, you'll find that um, there are distributors in Europe and other places, um, but you can also buy them direct from Russia from a couple of different um, sellers. Now I'm really quite clean to try these because uh, Graham has been using them, says they're excellent. Um, and they are super reasonably priced, really much less than Windsor and Newton Series 7. And uh, I'm, I'm keen to give them a go. They, for me, these are going to be uh, like be using these for my detail brushes, for eyes, faces, skin, freehand, stuff like that. Because uh, they're pretty thin. Um, they've probably got, see, they're number two. This is the number two here um, to me is a little bit more like in size to a series 7 number one so you can see what I mean about how from manufacturer to manufacturer it varies in fact the series 7 number one probably has a slightly fatter belly but this has longer looks like it's got longer uh, hairs on it so it's going to be really interesting to try these and I got a set of which was a two a one a zero and a double zero and it cost me with postage to Australia something silly like I don't know $18 Australian I mean that's that's a bargain and this is from the land of Kalinsky Sable <laughs> Russia I <laughs> And that seemed, they seem to be like a quite old and well-established paintbrush, Russian paintbrush uh, maker. So um, keen to try them out. And then if that works out, maybe try some of their other stuff too later on. I know they make some other uh, Kalinsky Sable brushes. So yeah, I was a little bit um, trepidatious about um, getting them from Russia. Um, the last lot of cheap brushes, say I got from China, never showed up. The container probably fell off the container ship. But anyway, so I thought, I'll give it a go. So here it is, covered in Russian stamps. <laughs> Absolutely covered in all these little 25 ruble stamps, I assume they are, in 2009. So yeah, so really excited. In fact, I get, I get more excited about brushes and paints and stuff like that than I do about um, getting new miniatures, to be honest. I and mean, it's just me. It's just my, that's what... For me, the hobby, I get a real buzz out of it. I, I get it. I enjoy games. I, I love history. I love, you know, I've talked about this stuff before anyway. But yeah, so, keen to give these a go. So, there you go. Righto. So, let me, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, if you've got any questions for me about the brushes, uh, something that I may have missed, uh, or tell me about your favourite brushes, suggestions, stuff, you know. I'm always I sort of look on the hunt for, try to find um, good sources of these cheap brushes um, as well, like, um, like those green ones I've been using or something similar. I'd like to get more. I always have lots and lots in stock because I'd hate to turn around and they were all manky and I'd run out. But, um, yeah, so there you go. Now, at the end of the video, um, like I said, I'm not doing an on the bench thing because I need to work around these issues of the light. Um, I'm just going to put up a couple of slides of uh, some figures um, I finished recently um, that I received from Creative Painting and Models in the UK from Richard. 
who uh, kindly sent me a couple of packs and I've had them on the desk for a while and I finally finished them so um, yeah I hope you enjoy them they're just a couple of Viking characters Apparently they might be based or something similar to something off the TV series I've never watched the TV series so I don't know I just kind of painted them um, but anyway I hope you enjoy that I um, hope you found that interesting let me know like I say if you've got any other questions about how I do stuff um, really happy to share um, and may and I've got more more stuff to talk about um, I've had a few things come in lately like interesting books um, I've just finished another big project uh, I've just had some six mil stuff arrive for me oh, that's another story for another day anyway I'll leave you with it and um, have a good one thanks everyone bye